I'd like to welcome in now Chris Cassidy, former NASA astronaut who performed 10 spacewalks during his 378 cumulative days in space. Uh, Chris, thank you so much for your time today. First, just talk about the significance of today's spacewalk. Well, uh, good morning. It's great to be with you. And it is so exciting for, for me to see uh, folks exit a space, exit this hatch of a spacecraft. I mean, traveling in space is amazing by itself, but there, it's a next level when you depressurize a compartment, put your hand on a hatch, crank that hatch open, lift it up the seals, and step out into the, into the vastness of space. It's risky. It's challenging. It's a tough part. It's probably the toughest thing we do as astronauts. Uh, but it's so special to see that view only limited by the thin visor on your, your helmet and for those two to have that. And don't don't underestimate the two that were sitting in their seats either. They, they effectively were at the same pressure. They were at the same pressure and just uh, in, uh, in the capsule. So exciting all around. What a day. Absolutely. So, so Chris, you've done 10 spacewalks. Talk about some of the potential dangers of actually doing a spacewalk. Well, spacewalks are the most challenging thing uh, in terms of uh, effort and probably risk. There's uh, micrometeor debris is a challenge for any spacecraft. And, and when you put somebody out there with a thin fabric suit, uh, if you get hit by a, a, some piece of debris, that could be catastrophic for the person. Uh, the, there's uh, different types of malfunctions that can happen with the with your suit itself. Now, the, the, the suits that we use to walk around on the International Space Station have a backpack called a PLIS, and all of your life support is, is contained there. Uh, these SpaceX suits are um, supplied with the life support and, and requirements for, the, for, um, for all of that through an umbilical that's connected back to the spacecraft, much like Ed White did on his first spacewalk um, back in Gemini. So uh, you could have a malfunction in this case with these guys, uh, the, the airflow to and from the suit, you could have a tangle, you could have a seal break on your gloves. Uh, I don't think they have glove seals in those suits. I haven't seen them myself, but there are seals in every suit and you, those can malfunction. So there's just, you're one, one failure away from a really, really bad day on a spacewalk. So Chris, I have to ask you, you know, because Elizabeth there talked about three, an estimated $300,000 per person uh, to be a part of this. I mean, that's something that you know, most of us will never be able to attain. Do you think that we are potentially heading to a situation where space does become the final frontier, but maybe only for the ultra wealthy? It's possible, but if you think, the, I'm asked this question often, and, and the, the way I contextualize it in my head is, if you think about the early um, cross-country air, air travelers on uh, the early days of, of aviation, it was just for the ultra-wealthy that could fly from New York to California and, and, and back. And the same thing is true right now for space. But it'll come down over time. It'll it'll uh, get to a place where I think many people could afford it. Now it's never going to be cheap, but I think that at some point, I don't know, it's decades from now or 50 years, 60 years, whatever, you'll say, hey, what do you want to do for Christmas this this uh, okay. vacation? Ah, oh, let's go to Hawaii. No, no, we went to Hawaii last year. Let's go to the space station. I, I think that's a conversation that families will have in some number of decades from yeah. now. Yeah, pack your bag, kids. Uh, we're going to go to space. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Chris, so we know that the Polaris missions, uh, because this is one of three, they aim toward working to one day send people to Mars. Do you think that's a real possibility? Yeah, I, I personally think the Mars astronauts um, are probably in middle school right now in terms of just how long it'll take and, and age-wise by the, it's not the folks that I retired. I, I re retired from NASA three years ago and my colleagues that are still there, um, there'll be moon, moon experience in, in that cohort of people, but the Mars uh, folks are a little bit further down the road. Just to, it's so costly to get uh, to, go into deep exploration, deep space exploration and go to Mars, uh, it's it's just a couple orders of magnitude more challenging and risk and more challenging and cost uh, than what we currently do. But I think it's something that, that mankind will do. And uh, whether it's a space race between us and China that drives it or just the curiosity of, of people, uh, eventually you'll see human beings footprints on Mars. Very, very cool. Chris, so cool to see those uh, pictures of you too there uh, during your time with NASA.
Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your screen. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.